7 crore 32 lakh farmer families across country received first two installments under Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana. Flood water levels in Assam receding, more than 44 lakh people still facing its wrath as 12 fresh deaths reported in past 24 hours. Boosting road communication in Meghalaya, much-awaited connecting bridge of Mentido has been thrown open to public. Veteran Congress leader and former Delhi Chief Minister for three consecutive terms, Sheila Dixit cremated this afternoon. And ace shuttler P.V. Sindhu lost her fight to her Japanese opponent in the Indonesian Open final. Good evening viewers and welcome to the Northeast News Bulletin. This is Ajanta Chaudhary, now with the details. Over 7 crore 32 lakh farmer families across the country have received the first and second installments of 2,000 rupees each under the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana amounting to 14,646 crore rupees. An official source said Uttar Pradesh with over 2 crores 20 lakh farmer families topped the list followed by Andhra Pradesh with 72 lakh and Maharashtra 50 lakh farmers. PM Kisan envisages covering approximately 14 crore 50 lakh beneficiaries across the country subject to exclusion criteria. In Assam, water levels in some districts are receding and more than 44 lakh people in 3,024 villages under 77 revenue circles of 24 districts are facing the wrath of flood. With reports of 12 fresh death cases from five flood-hit districts during the past 24 hours, the flood-related death toll rose to 60. The 12 death cases are one from Nolbari, three Borpeta, one Dhubri, five Morigao and two from South Salmara. The water level is receding in Kaziranga National Park. 68 forest camps are still underwater. Assam Governor Professor Jagdish Mukhi today made an aerial visit to Kaziranga to take stock of the devastation caused by flood in the national park. The governor also visited a relief camp at Defolu where the flood affected people of the fringe area of the national park were taking shelter. The countdown for India's second lunar mission, Chandrayaan-2, is set to begin this evening. The launch of the landmark mission is scheduled to be at 2.43 p.m. tomorrow. It will zoom into space on board the rocket GSLV Mark III from the launch pad at the Satish Bhavan Space Center, Sriharikota. The booster GSLV Mark III, having a liftoff mass of 640 tons, will initially carry Chandrayaan-2 to an elliptical orbit around the Earth. The revised timeline released by the ISRO said Chandrayaan-2 will encircle the Earth for 23 days. Gradually, it will be made to leave the Earth's sphere of influence by staging a series of maneuvers. On the 30th day of the launch, it will reach an orbit around the Moon for 13 days. Chandrayaan-2 will be on a lunar-bound phase. Meghalaya Chief Minister Conrad Sangma on Saturday, along with officials of the state government, held a meeting with the Coal Indian Limited on how to auction the extracted coal which is lying in the state following the order of the Supreme Court. The Apex Court had stated that entire extracted coal lying at various places in Hills districts of Meghalaya will be taken over by Coal India Limited and the firm would dispose of the same as per its normal method. After the meeting, Chief Minister Conrad Sangma said that the meeting discussed how to auction the coal in the best way even as he said that the response from Coal India was very positive. The long-awaited bridge over the river Mentido connecting West Jantia Hills to East Ka Jantia Hills District along Muktapur-Borkhat area was inaugurated on Friday by Deputy Chief Minister Preston Tinsong.
This bridge will connect many villages of both districts along the Indo-Bangla border like Dauki, Muktapur, Lakadong, Batao, Rimbai, etc. The construction of the bridge was completed at a total cost of 26 crore rupees. Speaking on the occasion, Tinsong said that the government is preparing the plan estimate for submission to the Union Donor Ministry for the construction of the road from Borukhat to Sonpar via Hingaria and Huroi. Doctors for Clean Air, an initiative of Lung Care Foundation and Health Care Without Harm, has launched the Assam chapter today at Guwahati with an aim to prevent death caused by air pollution. Speaking on the occasion, Dr. Arvind Kumar of Gangaram Hospital of Delhi said that air pollution is a silent killer, taking the lives of millions of people across the world and causing many health issues. He stressed on creating awareness among mass people on the harmful effects of air pollution. It is to be noted, as per a report prepared by Central Bureau of Health Intelligence in 2017, 225 people in Assam, 36 in Mizoram, 23 in Manipur and 21 in Tripura died due to respiratory-related diseases. Moreover, growing air pollution has emerged as a serious concern for the city of Guwahati in Assam as a survey conducted by Pollution Control Board Assam in 2015. Or take some time out, come into the public space and share this information with people. Veteran Congress leader and former Delhi Chief Minister Sheila Dixit was cremated this afternoon. Her last rites was performed at the Nigam Bodh Ghat. She was accorded a state funeral. Union Home Minister Amit Shah attended the funeral program. Dixit passed away yesterday at a private hospital in New Delhi after suffering cardiac arrest. Prominent leaders continue to pay their respects to Sheila Dixit. Veteran BJP leaders LK Advani, Sushma Suraj and former Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Omar Abdullah today visited her residence in the city. Yesterday, several leaders including Prime Minister Narendra Modi and UPA Chairperson Sonia Gandhi paid their last respects. Today, her body was kept at Congress headquarters, where a large number of people, including party leaders, paid their homage. Assam Governor Professor Jagdish Mukhi has condoled the death of Sheila Dixit. He described her as a dynamic and astute leader. Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana, PMKVY, which is a flagship scheme of the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship to enable a large number of Indian youth to take up industry-relevant skill training, has found many takers in Shillong and a large number of youths are coming forward to avail the benefits of the scheme in order to get a secured and stable livelihood. Youth, especially young women, were given training in Subham Center at Shillong. The Subham Skill Development Center is an institution in Meghalaya under Subham Charitable Association. Value of democracy is already degraded under the BJP government, but suppressing the voice of the people and democratic values will not last long since people also keep a close eye in the activities of the present government. This statement was made by the former Chief Minister of the State, Okram Ibobi Singh, while briefing media on Saturday in front of Congress Bhavan during a sit-in protest demanding the release of General Secretary, All India Congress Committee, Priyanka Gandhi Vadra, who was arrested on July 17 at Sonbaya District, Uttar Pradesh. He continued saying that the value of democracy is degrading under the present BJP government and independent institutions of the country as well as the voice of the people had been suppressed by the present government in the form of dictatorship. With a total of 2,321 candidates in fray for a total of 994 seats, Tripura to go for polls for three-tier panchayat on July 27. Deputy Inspector General in charge, Arindam Nath, said polling will be held in 71% booths of the total of 1,848 booths, of which 833 gram panchayats, 82 panchayat samitis, and 79 zilla parishads. Briefing media at a press conference in Agartala, he informed, a total of 1,894 candidates are in fray in gram panchayat, 
207 candidates for Panchayat Samiti and a total of 220 candidates are in fray for Zilla Parishad. He said in addition to this, of the total 1,848 booths where polling will be held on July 27, 1,172 booths are declared as sensitive and rest 676 booths are declared as normal. Indian ace shuttler PV Sindhu lost her games against Akane Yamaguchi of Japan in the Indonesia Open Summit Clash. Sindhu was defeated in the two straight games at 15-21 and 16-21. This was the first time in her career that Sindhu had made it to Indonesia Open final. In the semi-final yesterday, Sindhu outclassed a Chen Yui-Fei of China in just 46 minutes. The Board of Control for Cricket in India, BCCI, has announced squads for India's upcoming tour to West Indies. The squad for three T20 matches will include skipper Virat Kohli, Rohit Sharma, Shikhar Dhawan, K.L. Rahul, Shreyas Iyer, Manish Pandey, Rishabh Pant, Krunal Pandya, Ravindra Jadeja, Rahul Chahar, Bhuvaneshwar Kumar, Khalil Ahmed, Deepak Chahar and Navdeep Saini. Ajinkya Rahane, Arashwin, Ishan Sharma, Mohammad Shami and Jaspreet Bumra has been roped in for two test matches against the West Indies. MS Dhoni will not be a part of this tour. Are you done? Tripura gets its first ever bakery shop that will sell the products made in the bakery unit of Tripura Centre Correctional Home at City Centre, located in Agartala. Inaugurating the bakery on Saturday evening, Deputy Chief Minister Jishnu Dev Barman said it is an ambitious step which has been started by Tripura Rural Livelihood Mission and Central Jail Authorities. The name of the bakery is Trikos, the official brand of the correctional home. It is a multi-purpose showroom come bakery. Handicraft products will also be available in the shop. 30% share of the profit will be shared with the SHG. It is a pilot project. If this initiative gets successful, then we shall spread the business across the state. It will help generate employment, he said. Indian Thai Musical Performances Workshop was held at College of Maha Sarakham University from July 11 to 15 under the initiative of Kalasin College of Dramatic Arts at Bandit Patan Silpa Institute of Thailand under Cultural Exchange Program. The festival was marked by musical program workshop and seminars. Several artists from Thailand performed in the festival while artists from Assam led by Gina Rajkumari performed several folk songs and dances of Assam including Bihu and Jumu. The only living Mizo Indian freedom fighter alive, Darthwama, passed away in Lunglei today at the age of 99. Darthwama, born in 1921, May 15, under the British rule in India, went to World War II in 1939 along with the other 17 Mizo soldiers. Soon then, he was placed in Indian Army Medical Corps in 1940. Soon after, when World War II reached its pinnacle, under the leadership of Netaji Shubhas Chandra Bose, Darthwama joined Indian National Army for three years. During this time, he was accused of being against the British and was jailed in Chittagong and Calcutta jail. After national politics recovered from the worst situation in 1945, he got out from Lucknow jail. Indian government honored him with a Tamra Pratra award in 1972. And before we wind up the bulletin, a recap of the headlines. Over 7 crore 32 lakh farmer families across country received first two installments under Pradhan Mantri Kisan Saman Nidhi Yojana. Flood water levels in Assam receding, more than 44 lakh people still facing its wrath as 12 fresh deaths reported in past 24 hours. Boosting road communication in Meghalaya, much-awaited connecting bridge of Mintdu has been thrown open to public. Veteran Congress leader and former Delhi Chief Minister for three consecutive terms, Sheila Dixit cremated this afternoon. And ace shuttler PV Sindhu lost her fight to her Japanese opponent in the Indonesian Open final.
And that brings us to the end of this evening's bulletin. Thank you for tuning in. Namaskar.